Hi, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Self. Today I'm filming the end of the year book tag, which I've really enjoyed watching other people film. And so I'm having a go myself because it's really cracking on in the year now, so I haven't got a lot of time to um to fulfil the pledges I'm about to make. Um, just to say as well, the kids are in the bath in the room next but next door to this, so if you can hear lots of hijinks and silliness, then that's where it's coming from. So, um... Question one, are there any books you started this year and need to finish? Well, yes, there are. So there are two books which I have been reading for a long time, which I've mentioned numerous times on this channel, and I wanted to finish them this year, and I didn't, but I have made progress. So the first one, which I haven't actually made progress with at all, which is one I've nearly finished, but I'm just going to start again, um, is... Parenting Without Power Struggles by Susan Stufferman, which is a fantastic parenting book. I'd recommend it to anybody with children. Um, I've only got like that much left to go, but I, as I've previously said, I put it down because my child at the time, when I just had one, was too young to take some of this advice on board. And so I put it down to pick up again, and I really, really know that I would benefit a lot from rereading this. Um, starting from the beginning, so obviously I don't want to forget all of the initial chapters. So I just need to do it. I've been so engrossed in a lot of the fiction and non-fiction I've been reading. I just haven't picked it up again yet, but I need to. And the second one, which again I've mentioned many times, is Sacred Contracts by Carolyn Mace, which is a spiritual book. And I'm now... So, okay, I'm now nearly there. Um, Hold on. Okay, so I have... So this is all notes at the back so I've got that much left so not much considering I started the whole thing again in the end because I couldn't really remember what I'd read initially so I started from the beginning that I've got the, the reason I don't think I'm going to finish this by the end of the year I have made quite a lot of progress with it but I've still got 11 little mini essays to write for it so I'd have to do like two plus a week to get it finished by the end of the year which I doubt I'll do but I want to try and get at least halfway through the mini essays I did one last week and I've just got to like, finish those off. So that's why it's taking me so long. Not because it's not good, because it's really good. So, question number two. Do you have any autumnal books to transition into the end of the year? Well, well, kind of, I did a, a sort of autumn TBR, and that's the sort of books I've mentioned. I didn't want to just mention them all again. So I've just picked one book that I will read at this time of year it's more winter rather than autumn because obviously autumn's finished really now um and that is uh towards the night's just before christmas by adam k i'm definitely going to read this over christmas because it's obviously the, the perfect time of year to read it and i loved this is going to hurt so this is a teeny tiny little um night shift for christmas memoir about all the christmases he worked i saw him on jonathan was just day he's worked six christmases so um this should be this should be fun and i'm looking forward to that Next question, is there a new release you're still waiting for? Well, I have no idea what new releases are coming out because I don't really look at stuff ahead of time. So I just picked a new release, which I haven't got yet, which I'd like to get, and that is The Confessions by Jesse Burton. So I absolutely loved The Miniaturist and The Muse, and I'm really looking forward to The Confessions. It's, again, uh, dual narrative um, set, sort of, now in the modern day, and 30 years before, one of the characters is the daughter in the modern day of one of the previous characters and her life which took her to New York I think so um yeah so I'm really looking forward to that so that's my answer for that question three books that I would like to read before the end of the year so I decided for December all I want to read is like fun magical like happy cozy books and I just want an easy, enjoyable, fun month of reading. So I picked, excuse me, I picked five books which fulfil that brief. So I would like to read this book, The Peppermint Pig by Nina Borden. So this is a book I read when I was a child. This is a middle grade book and I bought it for my daughter and some when he's old enough and I just really want to reread it so um I'll read you the back um you can't keep a pig indoors mother but mother couldn't see why not give a pig a chance to keep clean and he'll take it she said 
Johnny was the only one of the litter, a little peppermint pig. His cost mother a shilling, but somehow his great naughtiness and cleverness kept Paul and Theo cheerful, even though it was one of the most difficult years of their lives. A charming and perceptive story by the author of Carrie's War. So I really want to read Carrie's War as well. Do you remember? I, I'm sure people probably would have read that at school, but we loved that story when we were at school. And um, I don't remember too much about this, but I remember it, loving it when I was younger. So the next one is Heidi by Joanna Spirey. So this is my actual childhood edition and this was one of my favourite stories ever when I was a kid and I absolutely loved it and me and Faye have read, have, have watched the latest film adaptation which is, I'm not sure in what language it's in actually but um, it's, it's kind of um, dubbed in English but the dubbing's done really well so it doesn't matter. So um, I'm really looking forward to reading Heidi. The next one is one that I'm doing as a buddy read with Sean and Bert from Past Story Time, and I think Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read is going to lurk in the background, which <laughs> she likes to do. Um, so, and that is um, Thorny Hold by Mary Stewart. So this is like a magical book, which I listened to on audio book when I was probably about 11 or 12 and absolutely loved. So I'll read you, I'll read, again, I'll read you the back. So to Julie, the house deep in the wild wood was an enchantment. Her very own enchantment left to her by her cousin, whose occasional magical visits had brightened her childhood. As she explored, she discovered more about the woman who had come to seem like a fairy godmother to her, her herbalist skills, her still room, her abilities to foresee and to heal. She discovered also that the local people believed that Jilly had inherited not just the house, but the magical spell weaving powers that lived on in the house and garden. Slowly, quietly, she came to realise that they were right. So yeah, sorry about all the mirth and giggling you can hear. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that a lot. And then the last two are two that I hauled <laughs> with my birthday money and I'll mention them together. So these two books here, so Pages and Co the late, by Anna James, the latest, um, sorry, the latest in the Pages and Co series, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales, so that's number two in the series. This is number two in the Morrigan Crow series. This is Wonder Smith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow. I'm sure everyone knows what these are about. If you don't, check them out because they're really good. And they're both book two in the series. Um, right. Is there, is there a book that could still shock you and become your favourite book of the year? Well, I don't really think a book would shock me because if I wasn't expecting it to be good and I wouldn't pick it up in the first place. But... One book that I want to read very soon because the film adaptation is about to come out and I want to reread it is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. So I haven't read this for about 20 plus years, 25 years probably, and so I, I can't remember the story that much and so I really wanted to read it before I watched the film. But having said I want to read five other books that might be a little bit ambitious. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got the beautiful cloth bound classics edition i'm just looking if loads of it is notes but it's not actually so it's longer than i remember actually there's a little bit of it that's notes but not much so yeah i know isn't i just love these editions so lovely and this one look ah, uh, for mother's day 2015 from Faye. so that was when she was one bless her so and then the last question have you already started making reading plans for 2020? Well, yes and no. I don't want to make too many plans because I don't want to feel tied down. But um, I will go back through my plans that I made at the start of this year and I'll probably see how I did and probably make some plans for next year. So far, all I could think of was three authors who I'd like to read this coming year. Two of which I'm carrying over from last year. Maggie O'Farrell, Sarah Morse and Helen Dunmore. I'd like to read more of my spiritual books. I haven't read enough of them this year. I'd like to read by whim as much as possible. And I'd also like to do one or more readathons. So I did kind of themes like, you know, like non-fiction November, novellas for November, that kind of thing. But I didn't actually do like any actual readathons. So like I've seen Heather recently do Believeathon, which was really good. And I have seen, I'd like quite like to see the Harry Potter the owls and the newts one so i really enjoyed watching people do that and the buzzword of thought is this i think it's for last month was to read books with numbers in the title 
something like that i actually counted i have 13 bits with numbers in the title so i could easily do like one of those kind of things but i just figure i'll do that one when the mood strikes me because i'm not going to try and do it in december so that was my um end of the year book tag tag <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching. If you've done a, a video of this, then link it down below. Or if you want to tell me your answers to any of the questions, then you do if you don't have a channel yourself. And I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you're having a lovely week and I'll see you soon. Bye.